Welcome to Rooted Cosmic Soul. This is Rooted Cosmic Soul Storytime. This week's micro story is called A Message in the Wind. I hope you find yours. So I'm interrupting my usual process for story time because my intuition told me to. You're gonna hear the story uh, and then know that there's a message that I'm gonna offer at the end of the story. And it's for someone, my intuition told me, someone needed to hear a little bit more about how this whole story came about. So it was a really beautiful learning for me and um, it's someone else is supposed to hear this. I don't know who you are, but I trust uh, my guides that you exist and you're supposed to hear. And if I can support you on your path, wonderful. Makes me very, very happy. So enjoy the story. And if you feel so moved, and Spirit told me that you will feel it, you'll know that the message is for you. Uh, Stay a little bit after, and I'll see you again. The wind came through today, whipping and wiping senses and skin. It was as if wind was seeking to cleanse and clear away something that was in the way of things. Winding through crevices and off cliffs, wind leaped down mountainsides and thrusted through valleys, arriving with intention and focus, using the tips of tree branches to tap, tap, tap my window. You are a channel, are you not? Whispered wind. Yet it fell into one ear and flew out the other, and I did not respond. You see, wind cannot land, for wind is not made for such things so tangible. No, wind is of the here and the no longer here simultaneously. And so wind howled, this time vibrating the material doors and ethereal passageways surrounding my corporeal being. You are a channel, are you not? roared the wind with a resonance so deep its gale rang in my ears. It was then I realized wind held a message. Since wind cannot land, wind cannot be seen and cannot be held. Wind shows us what it is seeking through treetops above and swiveling sands below. Wind's words swirl and swim through ether and elm. Not conjured to be still or slow, for wind to share its message takes quite the effort and is quite the gift. So I took heed, slowed, and became still myself. It was in the balance of my stillness and the wind's activeness where a threshold was found and this message could be downloaded. This is what wind had to share. For millions of years, I have roamed this space and what my airy wings touch and tease change with rotations. My purpose remains, and it is to purify and flow, adding to the balance and harmony of my sister elements, fire, water, air, and ether. It is a duty I hold sacred, and on occasion, as I envelop and engage this duty, I am the one enveloped and held by a breath and a desire coming together so delicately and precisely, I cannot but stop. Have you ever experienced a day so still you notice and wonder, where's the wind? It is in these moments that I, the wind, have been enveloped in a pure heart finding balance and harmony. Who can resist taking a sacred pause for such an energetic force? 
Even our system's brightest star couldn't help but assist. The delivery of this message was energized by a shifted sun sending a singular and solitary solar flare with precision and purpose, activating a formerly inactive soul star, seeking a still dormant and unaware earth star. Both originating way past the root of things and growing into the ethers and all that is crowned. I released my windy ways just long enough to hold this message so that it could be passed on. May it find the mirror it seeks and may it land and be held there again. Deep from a past lifetime, a lifeline opens in this one, where I sense murky memories of meaning something to you. In me, crystallized tugs seek a familiar home, in between parallel synapses, dormant yet aware, waiting for this moment. A former piece of you tugging and slipping through, burrowing, seeding, nestling, my brow, my throat, and my sacral chakras. As filaments ignore this world's notions of space and time to whisper and weave inside my every part. Do you remember me? Because I know you. Swirling in ethers of a conspiring and smirking spirit, your tug emerges, fragments of a you and me, here but not. Pushed into a current lifeline, flowing up and through ancient water-cooled crevices, taking a lifetime to find you in this chaotic present tapestry threaded and patched in elemental remembrance, creating a quilted connecting force. A tug here driving me back to then. Do you remember me? And a tug there guiding me back to now. Because I know you. Arriving as an undoing till I'm threadbare yet made remembered whole where life time and lines coalesce. Feeling you in the eye of my heart, your tug deep, steadfast and there, and the oldest whispers of who we are. Do you remember me? Because I know you. Hello, welcome back to the time with a D. <laughs> um, I hope that the story was whatever you needed it to be. And I am pleased that you're here. So know that when I wrote that story, when the, the thought for the story came up, it was it was actually windy. Like the, the wind actually brought that in. I'm in the high desert of New Mexico and um, this is windy season and it was pretty um, intense that day um, I like to say oh yeah I was definitely on the scene bringing it in uh, and I had just finished meditating and I um, was just sitting like I was sitting silently taking in really beautiful feeling of you know my chakras and stuff feeling balanced and I had the thought of the wind was blowing I had the window open a little bit and I had this thought of like oh let's write a story about the wind and the power of the wind because I could just feel it so intimately amazingly I just felt it through my entire body and so I started thinking about that and started creating the story and I immediately thought about this poem that I had written back in 2023, last year back in, <laughs> last year. And uh, and I'm a little nervous, right? I'm a little nervous right now because this is very, it's fairly personal. And I, I'm a pretty open book, but this is spiritually pushing me to go vulnerably here. So anyway, 2023 was a pretty rough year for me. It was... Um, 
I think for many of us, right, the the universe, spirit, your gods, goddesses, guardians, ancestors, whatever you want to call it, I think for many of us, were, they were preparing us for 2024. For me, that preparation was a It was, it was a time of seeing so many aspects about myself that needed to change and that, and then simultaneously also seeing that I had the power to change it and also seeing that I was afraid to make those changes. Um, and so knowing really well, you know, I had to do some really loving, compassionate shadow work. And by the end of 2023, I was really clear that a lot of my work on myself, my, my transmuting of my eye was going to be around understanding reciprocity and living in reciprocity. Um, you know, meaning learning to love myself enough to receive love from others, not just constantly giving, giving, giving. And so it also meant a real balanced yin and yang center so just really coming into a clear understanding of what the divine masculine is what the divine feminine is and the balance between the two and so just back to 2023 back to the poem um i downloaded that poem in 2023 at a time that i had met a new person and we weren't friends um we were um professional colleagues at best in, in the same community, but not friends. And, um, when I wrote that poem, I had just met this person and I externalized that poem. I really thought that that poem was about them. And partially it's because at the time I met them, they seemed really familiar, like eerily familiar to me. And also, honestly, they had really consuming energy. Not that anything was wrong with them, but my experience, my perception of them was very strong energy and it felt very consuming. And so my interpretation of this poem was like, oh, it's, it's about them. And I have left it there. Um, I had not really read that poem for a while. I do love reading my own poems over and over again, but that one I hadn't necessarily revisited until I was sitting with the wind and I thought about this message and, um, that poem popped up. So I made that poem the latter part of this story. So I did that. I wrote the story, put the poem in there, was ready to record it, get it up on my YouTube channel. And then something told me to wait. So I waited. And the next day I was actually driving and I, I, I was thinking about the story. I was thinking about when I would have time to record and, and you know, edit the, the images and stuff, put the images in there. And I just heard really clear, that story is not what you think it's about. And I heard it so clearly and I laughed to myself while I'm driving and I was like, well, what is it about? And it's like I, I got this really intense download instantly. And then I just knew, oh, that was never a poem from one heart to another heart, you know, from one person to another person. That's not what that poem is about. That poem is was a message from my higher self to my healing self. Um, and that's where the recipro like the the learning of, of reciprocity and uh, comes into this. And then, and then I was also really clear that I was really grateful that I had that awakening and just being able to see how I had externalized that message when it was a hundred percent an internal message and why I externalized it and being able to see it, me being able to see, I am in the healing process. And there's a lot of things that I have healed. I've come into this really beautiful relationship with a lot of parts of my shadow self who I've asked not to disappear. Just, we got to work together. Right. Um, and at the same time, realizing that someone else needs to hear this message that they're going to listen. Someone's going to listen to it and probably as well externalize it and needs to hear that if you're here and you're listening to this because you were moved by spirit, not cause you're nosy, but, or maybe cause you're nosy, who knows? Um, 
it's important for you to know that that is about your higher self loving on you, letting you know that they're still there, that they know you, that it's okay to remember the healed parts of you, the part, it's okay to remember that you are so loved and that the love emanating from within you is enough. It will open us up to the love that we like, like I'll speak from the eye that I seek outwards. Like I know that I'm coming in more into the ability to manifest that in a really healthy way, having such a deep love for myself. So if any part of that resonates for you, like when I said, when I say that is a love message from your higher self to your healing self. If you feel that in any part of your body, this is for you. If you feel it any part in your thoughts, even resistance, um, this is for you. If you feel it any where in your emotions, you're feeling tender, you, maybe you're starting to cry because I could see that this message could do that. This message is for you. So our deeper, uh, what I'm learning is that our deepest selves are still there. They're just sometimes a little shielded <laughs> and guarded from the trauma that we've experienced in this life. But those divine parts are always with us. And love us. So the main message I think is your higher self loves you so very much in all lifetimes, in all timelines, you are loved. My sweet, tender-hearted friend, thank you for staying for the message. May you remember how much you are loved. unfettered and infinite love and gratitude.